This is a clip taken from a channel called Depressing the Optimist. I'm going to put it up on your own screen. And it's a legit, legitimately a cringe fest. Uh, and it's titled, are, Lo are Logan Paul and Brenda Shaw friends? Question mark. And it basically takes some clips from, from sorry, Brendan Shaw's recent appearance on Logan Paul's show, which was an absolute car crash and something that they clearly, I wouldn't say, maybe it was a last minute thing. Maybe it was because there's been a lot of time in between the last episode and since that, since then, Brendan's reputation online has kind of diminished and maybe his fan base has sent him as a clip of Brendan. But the energy was really weird between them on the show, between Logan and Brendan. And I felt bad for Logan, for Brendan watching the interview. I'm not going to lie, man. Um, he was getting laughed at at times. He was getting mocked. Um, you know, those three guys, and Mike and the other guy, I forgot his name, um, they clearly, you know, are in a space where they don't need... Brendan Schultz co-signed, they don't care about Joe Rogan, they live in their own reality, and they're just enjoying, you know, being young millionaires, living in LA, and just doing whatever the fuck they want, and they clearly had that energy throughout the entire show, and it was just horrible to see, for once, Brendan in a space where he wasn't able to kind of, you know, um, you know, swing his cock around, or whatever it may be, but, yeah, it was brutal, so this is a kind of, a little bit of a really cool compilation clip that this channel put together, I'm going to play it, and hopefully you guys find it as funny as I did. We're boys. We're boys. We're boys. What are they? What's up, brother? How are you? Good to see you, bro. Pleasure. It's always a pleasure. What's going on? <laughs> Not nothing. Brendan Schaub is joining us today. How are you, Brendan? I'm good, man. How you fellas doing? Good. Are you are you dipping right now? Yeah, 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 dude. Nicotine. Was that a, was that a sponsor? Yeah. Uh, I bet. Mean, it started off naturally, though. Are we getting paid for you? I mean, you can have some if you want some. Well, I should say why you're on you're on this show because you have a special coming out. Correct. Awesome. Where is it coming out? Uh, YouTube. Just I do YouTube. You're a YouTube. Are you a vlogger? No, not at all. No. <laughs> you do YouTube? You know, try. <laughs> you're doing great. Yeah. You like Logan's shirt? Yeah, I dig it. Because we were just at Coachella. That's what a lot of this episode is going to be about, I think. They've also, shout, shout out to our George. George Janko is yeah, here. This, he, this isn't an episode without our George. Partially why Brendan's Jesus here, because on our last episode. Say something, just, George, just even if it's quick. Get in here. Brendan can fill in, but how are how you feeling? Um, I, oh. Jeffree Star has some fantastic weed, man. Can I say something cool? Yeah. I've been, I've been waiting for this moment. Oh. Uh, we got, we gotta go to dinner, bro. Yeah, sorry guys. So what? Where, where can they watch your special? Thanks, man. Uh, Thick Boy YouTube what called you? the Gringo Poppy. <laughs> Fantastic, Kevin. How do you feel about that? <laughs> he, he's Mexican. <laughs> yeah, he, we'll see. He goes. I haven't heard the jokes. Some flaming hot Cheeto jokes in there, shit like that. You like it, man? <laughs> well, yeah. guys, thank you for listening to this episode of Impulsive. We love you. We'll see you next week. Hit that subscribe button. Peace. Oh. Oh my. God, man, his face, his little face, his little face there. Oh, man. This is why I'm not built for LA, man. I'm not built for LA in this way, especially when you want social approval, you want the approval of your peers, you want to be seen a certain way. I'm not built for this. I'm not built for this. I'm not built for this because... This is what you have to do in order to maintain your career in LA, especially when Joe Rogan decides to move to Austin. You kind of have to keep the fires burning. You kind of have to keep stoking the fires, keep you know moving the flipping charcoal around, putting some fresh wood in. You just have to keep it moving. And part of keeping it moving is getting on Logan Paul's podcast where he clearly doesn't even care that you're there with his friends that clearly don't care about you as a person and you know haven't thought about you a second of their life. <laughs> they don't care about the clout you have they take nothing they don't give a fucking flying fuck they might have seen a couple funny memes of you maybe doing some shitty joke or getting knocked out but they don't know they don't know anything about him it's just you have to sit there and take it you have to take it you can't bully them and the thing that's funny about this too is that he's a stand-up comedian so he should in theory be able to sense how awkward it is and make it funny because that's what made some of Tim Dillon's 
real early appearances on the Logan Paul show. And maybe I think t- t- Logan Paul came on Tim Day. I'm not too sure. But regardless, Tim was really capable and able to make the ridiculous nature of the fact that him being an adult, you know, a stand-up comedian and, and, a, and a grown-up on that show, make it funny and kind of cut the tension. Oh, big up, we got Super Chat. Big up, John Valdez. Appreciate you. Five dollars. Ella Mayo. He looks so sad. <laughs> yeah, he does. He looks so terrible. Honestly, he looks... It just he, clearly he thought it would be one way, and he got on the show and it's completely the other way. Do you know what I mean? Like they just didn't vibe at all in the slightest. Which again, which is why I say from the beginning, I think I've said it when we were talking about what were we talking about. Oh, we were talking about the um, we were talking about Eric Griffin when he was saying whatever he was saying, sucking up to to Brendan Schaub. The point I was making was that he was saying throughout the entire segment, he was talking about the whole drama with the uh, Annie and fucking Kalila. He was saying, oh, Bobby Lee's my friend. Brenda's my friend. I was like, no, they're not your friends. This is flipping LA friendships. They're not real friendships. LA friendships is just like you work together or you might see each other someplace or wherever it may be. And I think sometimes because they're on social media a lot, these guys, and they're liking each other's pictures and they're sending each other DMs, they sometimes get it true that because they see them online all the time and they might share the odd, like, you know, double tap on a DM or whatnot, that they think that that's a sign of friendship or they think that that kind of equates to what it would be like if they met in real life. But then you meet each other in real life and it's like, nah, mate, I'm not your friend. I've got some real life stuff going on. I don't know who you are. I don't care about you at all in the slightest. Like, God almighty. This was clearly one of those, you know, also I was sad about this. This is clearly one of those, this is the last favour I'm ever going to do for you kind of things. You know when somebody kind of owes you something because they, you're kind of resting on a past friendship kind of thing? Like, for sure, I don't think we're ever going to see Brendan Shaw on Logan Paul show again. I don't think so. No. Another special comes out, I won't see him on there again. I don't think so. This is the last favour he's going to get out of that guy because clearly this is a kind of reminder of like, oh shit, we're actually not friends. You know, it's like when you meet somebody that you haven't know, you haven't seen in a while and you, you, you had an image of them in one way and then you meet them again like, oh, I don't really know you now or I don't think you're cool or I think you're lame or whatever it may be or I think you're annoying. But, oh, mate, this is brutal, man. Absolutely brutal. Um, but yeah, I guess nature of the beast isn't it he has to he, he, he wants to he wants to get some eyes and ears on his special you have to go where the eyes and ears are and sometimes it's not going to end the way you want in it it gets as part and parcel of the process but I guess it's part and part of the process then we got this random clip which is absolutely brutal too because it looks like my man saw an absolute ghost or he's afraid of cameras or afraid of what this might look like but it's a really innocent clip that somebody put on the fight and the kids subreddit of what looks like Brendan's wife taking a picture, so taking an Instagram video of them walking to the cinema, I guess, because it says Top Gun. And Brendan looks like he legitimately saw a ghost. Like, he looks really scared. <laughs> like, What's that? Scared or annoyed? What do you guys think? More so annoyed, isn't it? Maybe it's annoyed. Maybe it's um what we've all had, where you've had an argument with your spouse in the car, on the way there beforehand, and then they start asking you a question about your week, and you're like, the f- what the fuck? But this is it. <laughs> <laughs> He's so pissed off, man. <laughs> Look at his face. He's not happy. That's not a happy camper, is it? That is not a happy camper. But can you imagine what that must be like? Um... <laughs> Look at that. Can you imagine how flipping horrible it must have been the last couple of weeks or the last couple of months or whatever it must have been? Like, because I just honestly, I can't for the life. I know I've said it many times or in here before, but I can't for the life of me understand why he even addressed the whole Kalila and Annie thing in the first place anyway, even in a passing way. He should just pretend like it didn't happen. Every interview he did just pretended like it was it wasn't a case like because obviously the timing was horrible because I think when they announced what they announced on Trash Tuesdays I think that was around the same time he was promoting special so he had to go in a press run and then slowly those things were going to come out anyway but for the most part he's done really well I think again this is giving Brendan some credit let's give him some credit guys I think Brendan's done a really good job until this point 
to essentially ignore the subreddit. He ignores the subreddit, it doesn't exist. Everyone that criticizes his comedy is a hater, even if they have some constructive criticism to say, unless you're a stand-up comedian who's touring the world, unless you're ripped, unless you're famous, unless you wear cool clothes, unless you're, you've got a cool car, anyone that says anything negative about his work, for the most part, he just kind of deletes you and he doesn't really pay you much attention. For the most part, he's done really well at kind of maintaining that frame of work or frame of, frame of mind. But for whatever reason, these two allegations... These two innocent stories from these two ladies broke through. They just they crashed the flipping third wall. And he kind of just had to react. And when he did react, it was the most insane things that he was saying that didn't make any sense. Legitimately no sense. The whole reason behind it, the, the Bobby Lee, the Reddit thing, like, what? What's someone saying to me here? Um, Dane Payne. Why does Brendan keep letting his kids pick out his clothes? <laughs> I've got no opinion I just think it's just hilarious how scared and upset he looks and man thoughts and prayers to flipping um, the Mexican isn't it um, his wife because God almighty I can only imagine how embarrassing and annoying that whole issue is because you've done nothing wrong you're just there enjoying your life trying to be a good partner trying to be a good mum trying to hang out have a good time and then you're being subjected to all this drama all of this drama do you know what I mean? Constantly. And even, like, I don't even want to get involved in this in that way because it's not something that I want to talk about when it comes to relationship stuff. It's not my business. I don't care. Personal stuff, blah, 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 blah. I just laugh at the stuff that Brendan puts out because I think this is hilarious enough. You don't need to dig in too much in, in the other bits and pieces of it. But even myself and being somebody that's a minor person in this whole thing, I'm a nobody. But even I've had people reaching out to me in the DMs right, other females, right, and alleging some crazy shit, <laughs> yeah, some of them I'm not even, I, I like, I feel uncomfortable even opening the messages, I don't even know why I replied, I shouldn't even reply, but I had a couple of people reach out to me um, over the last few weeks or whatnot, and basically try to want, you know, to share their story, or want me to basically share it, or whatever, and I'm not going to do that, because that's just not something I'm willing to do at all in the slightest, but clearly there's a lot more going on behind the scenes than we know of, and it's just like, man, you just need, sometimes in life you just need to take lessons or things to take um, cue points from society, or not cue points from the world in general, and just relax. When you just, when you saw what happened to Chris Alia, when you saw what happened to, Brent, to Brian Callan, you should have just chilled out, legitimately chilled out. But for whatever reason, maybe that explains why he was crying so much when that happened to Chris Alia happened, right? Maybe that's what happened. He, Chris and Lee, you know, got flipping accused of touching underage girls and he was sobbing on his podcast as if, like, my man got arrested for murder or something or hit and run or something. I don't know. It was bizarre, that, you know, that reaction, looking back on it. But maybe the reason why he was reacting like that and he was so emotional was because it was, uh, it was his kind of weird acknowledgement that he also had his own skeletons and he's going closer. Maybe that was it. I don't know. But regardless, man, he needs to just relax relax hopefully this is a point that he does and wake up and just be like you know what just number one because again the standard special we didn't like it we all thought it was terrible but it still got a million views he still got loads of engagement from it he deleted all the comments like an idiot doesn't make any sense but whatever let him do that stuff um but he's still the talk of the town probably one of the greatest press runs ever in terms of a comedy special i've ever seen in my entire life um he done, you know, he got what he needed to get out of it in terms of the eyes and the ears. In his head, he's still thinking he did a good job. Cool. Just focus on your fans. They clearly still like you. They love all your thick boy merch. They like how you talk about your dick all the time on shows and, you know, you don't analyse fights and stuff. They love everything. all the things that we think are bad. They like it, clearly, because he's got fans. Just double down on the fans and focus on that, your family, your friends. That's it. You're never going to change the narrative online and become the good guy everyone roots for become the level of the level of douche that ship has already sailed but just relax relax because these streets are mean and if he keeps acting like a douche what's going to happen is that most likely these girls who have been reaching out to me are going to probably reach out to somebody way more popular who has less morals and principles than i do who just wants to you know have have a laugh and point fingers and they're going to lay into him and say some stuff and it's going to be really peak and you know look i i don't know i'm just i'm just saying i, I don't know what do i know what do i know <laughs>